Ever wondered why the police have reggae elements in their music? Or why The Clash even covered reggae songs? Or why Bob Marley has a song called Punky Reggae Party? Today we're gonna take a look at the reggae punk movement from the perspective of the bass player. During the summer of 1977, something special was going on in British music. Punk bands like The Clash, X-Ray Specs and The Sex Pistols teamed up with reggae bands such as Steel Pulse and Aswad, sharing the stage in concerts for the Rock Against Racism movement, which opposed racism and fascism. This collaboration brought together the rebellious spirit of punk and the vibes of reggae, creating a unique and powerful musical blend. The influence of reggae, ska and dub on the 1970s UK punk can be attributed to several factors. First of all, the multicultural makeup of Britain at the time contributed to the cross-pollination of musical styles. Many Caribbean immigrants brought their music with them, leading to a significant impact on the UK music scene. Punks are outcasts from society, so are the Rastas, Bob Marley told journalist Vivian Goldman in a 1977 interview. The Reggae King had just given a nod to the genre with his punky reggae party release in the same year, celebrating the cultural blend. Sex Pistols lead singer Johnny Rotten was famously fond of Jamaica, and their song Anarchy in the UK, the punk anthem, started off as a reggae song. Fuck off! I turned you on to reggae! All right, John. But how did it translate to the music, and more specifically, to the bass department? On paper, it's all but a match made in heaven. Reggae music is proverbial for its relaxed and laid-back bass line. Punk is at the other end of the spectrum, being based on primitive, simple and very aggressive rhythms, and thus, bass lines. So how do they combine together? Reggae bass lines traditionally have a lot of space in between notes or runs, which contributes to its overall relaxed and laid-back vibe. Early punk bands like The Damned or Sex Pistols would most likely have a lot of chords and frantic eighth notes with no real space in between. If we compare them to a band like The Specials, Much more space in between the notes and a way more interesting and driving bass line. On a message to you, Rudy, is the empty space on the three that gives the song this bouncy reggae feeling. Same goes on the clashes, the crooked beat. of the bass, guitar and drum. Another key aspect of reggae bass is the tone, often muffled to the point that many reggae bass players deliberately use dead strings. And I never change the strings, understand? I, 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 and, and it's keeping on playing same way. I use the bass. To the contrary, many punk bands like Green Day or Rancid make a point of having a very bright bass tone with a lot of attack. And even in these early stages of the genre, with limited equipment, you could hear the tendency in bands like the Ramones. For the UK bands of the reggae punk era, the tone is rolled off. If I had to pick just one bass player to represent the best punk reggae bass, it would be Paul Simonon. And it's not surprising, when Paul was getting his start in the music business and learning how to play the bass, he found it easier to play along to reggae songs rather than traditional rock songs. Plus The Clash regularly covered reggae classics like Police and Thieves. The next generation. 
The band who capitalized the most on reggae was definitely The Police. Although not a proper punk band, more like trying really hard to be one, The Police implemented reggae elements in their music since the very beginning. Roxanne features a prime example of reggae bass. On the verse, Sting leaves beat one empty, a famous reggae rule called one drop rhythm. <laughs> Thanks to Wendy Summers' jazz influences and Stuart Copeland's sophisticated rhythms, the police took it to a whole new level. The first three police records are loaded with incredible reggae inspired bass lines. <laughs> On top, over the years, Sting gradually switched from a steady punk picking technique to his now famous thumb approach, a trademark reggae way to go. Another typical reggae feature are 16th notes ostinato runs. If you do it on the fifth, you can add a reggae touch just to about to anything. The fills normally happen on the two and work mainly with root and fifth, which create a typical feeling of suspension. This note sequence spawned fantastic bass lines such as Bank Robber by The Clash. It also appears on Ghost Town by The Specials. It's also on Jaw War by The Rots, another great and very underrated band. Make sure you check them out. If you think punk music is all about lame chords and sloppy musicians, well, check again. One more aspect of reggae bass is using question and answer style bass lines. It can be found in bands like The Stranglers. And once again, The Clash, the bass lines of London Calling or Guns of Brixton all use these mirror patterns based on question and answer. One more thing I have to mention is that reggae bass lines are very often syncopated, interweaving the bass part with the drum part instead of blasting away together, as it's typical of punk rock. Although more rooted in ska music, Madness is one step beyond has clear reggae elements, including a lively bass line. Another great example is Instant Hit by The Slits, which I especially like because it uses a 5-4 time signature. Since we're talking about odd time signatures, have a listen to Golden Brown by The Stranglers. The main hook is built on 168 and 178 time signature. Not a lot of reggae here, but it's really cool. You don't find this kind of stuff when listening to the Ramones. The fusion of reggae and punk bass lines explored in this video offers a vibrant musical journey that goes beyond genres. The rhythmic foundation of reggae, characterized by its laid-back groove, seamlessly intertwines with the high-energy, rebellious spirit of punk. These bands create a unique sonic landscape that bridges cultural and stylistic gaps. This hybrid genre not only showcases the versatility of the bass guitar as an instrument, but also exemplifies the power of musical collaboration. Whether you're a reggae enthusiast or a punk rock fan, or someone seeking innovative sounds, these bass lines prove that musical experimentation knows no bounds. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and follow me on Instagram for more.